want me to, should we do a sound check? Testing one, two, three, one, two. Good morning, good morning. It's good to be here with you today. And the battery looks like it should be good. Okay, thank you. And I don't have to touch this now, right? You control the, perfect. for like 10 minutes or Three minutes. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm learning your practices here. It's been a year since I was here last, so I always have to relearn how congregations do things. I am Pastor Chris Totsky. I'm the Bishop's Associate for the Northern Texas and Northern Louisiana Synod. 
And yes, I was here with you about a year ago installing Pastor Joan as your interim pastor. So it's nice to be back to help cover while she has gone on vacation. And I just want to point out, I'm only the, the preaching pastor today. The presiding pastor is Pastor Joel Hicks from St. Stephen Lutheran as we are bringing the two congregations together for worship this morning. That's a nice thing to have happen. I was in Lubbock in November and we did a similar kind of thing there with the two congregations in Lubbock and they, they all were happy to see the, the difference with having more voices together in worship and it was just a wonderful thing to have happen. Um, as far as announcements, I don't know if there are any particular announcements other than what's in your bulletin. Um, I know I'm meeting with the call committee after the service for not a real long meeting, um, but I do want to do some updating with you. And the council is welcome to be a part of that meeting, too. Um, it won't be long, I promise, because I have to be in Marshall at 1 o'clock to meet with their members. So I won't be keeping you here all day. <laughs> um, and I was told that Bob had something he wanted to say. And I was also told that you all know Bob. We don't normally do testimonies in our Lutheran church, but sometimes it's good to have one thrown in. So thank you, Bob, for that and, and that reminder. Thank you. Um, we, uh, I think uh, I should be asking, it says acknowledge visitors. Well, I know we have visitors today because we've got the St. Stephen Lutheran Church here, uh, people here today. So um, do you usually have the visitors stand up? Is that how you do it or you just that we just say welcome? Okay, wave if you're a visitor. <laughs> and actually, we're all visitors because it's God's world. So, um, so it's good to have you here with us today. And I am also wondering, it says the mission's in bold. Do we read that together? All right, let's remind ourselves of what the mission is of this congregation as we speak these words together. We, the people of Holy Trinity, are called to glorify God by building vibrant relationships with Jesus and joyfully sharing his message with others, which Bob just modeled for us. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes, we all wave and share the peace. I know some people love the fact that this is how we share the peace now, and there are some people who really miss their hugs. So we will get back there again someday. But until then, we get ready for worship. Let us prepare our hearts as we come together. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that your Holy Spirit be present in this place today, that we feel it blow, that we hear your words, that you make your presence known among us. Give us the strength and the nourishment that we need for the weeks and the days ahead. But help us also to remember that everything comes from you. It is not our own doing. It's always from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
and we will get ready for worship now.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. And the Word was life. And the light was the light of all people. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. Psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Incline your ear and save me from the hand of the wicked. I will go on in the strength of the Lord God. I will proclaim your goodness, yours alone. invite the kids up at this point. It may be just two of us today, huh? 
A three, all right. Oh. And your name is Miriam. And what's your name? Cole? Okay. I have a question for you. Cole, you're a little older. Do you know what you want to be yet? Cole wants to be an engineer. Any engineers out here? All right. Did you want to be an engineer when you were a kid? <laughs> Did anyone here want to be an engineer when you were a kid and is not? Bob. Bob, what did you end up doing? 22 years in the Air Force. <laughs> well, similar to the engineering path in some ways, but okay, that's good. What do you want to be, Miriam? Artist. An artist. Did anyone out here want to be an artist when you were a kid? I see at least one, two hands, three hands. Are you artists now? Yeah. That's good. That's good that you know what you want to be. You know what? I changed my mind a lot when I was a kid. I wanted to be a teacher, and then I wanted to be a police officer, and then I wanted to be a lawyer, and then I wanted to be a police officer. All this law stuff, and I end up doing gospel. <laughs> but then when I went to college, I decided I wanted to be a teacher, which I did for a little while for four years. I taught fourth grade. And I'm guessing you're a third grader? What grade are you in, Cole? Fifth grade. So I was right in between you two. I taught fourth grade. And then God decided there was something else I needed to be doing. But I didn't want to be a pastor. I never thought about wanting to be a pastor. But sometimes God has other plans for us. But God gives us the gifts to do what we're called to do. You have the gift of art. I can't draw to save my life. If I do something, nobody would be able to figure out what it was. I'm, I've never been very good at art. I would be a terrible engineer. I am so bad at details. I, am, I used to be good at math, but I don't remember that stuff much anymore. And I don't even know what else engineers need to know, but it's all, I know it's all technical stuff. I'm not good at that stuff. So I am grateful that you two have gifts that I did not have and still do not have. And I'm wondering, as I look out here, how many of you are doing now as adults what you wanted to be when you were kids? There are a few hands, but a whole lot that didn't raise their hands. Because sometimes God helps us find other things that we're called to do. So I hope that you get to do what you want to do. But be ready, because sometimes along the way, you'll find things you want to do even more, that you get more excited about yet. God's going to be working with you through all of it. And God will give you the gifts that you need to be able to do the work you are called to do. I hope you will be a wonderful famous artist someday and make a lot of money because I don't think artists make much money normally. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yesterday was Miriam's birthday. And I think we should sing to her. Do we have any other birthdays here too? We'll just sing to Miriam then. Makes it easier to put one name in. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for giving us so many talents and gifts and things that we are good at doing and things that we learn how to do. Be with us through our lives as we continue to learn and to grow and to change. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, you can go back to your seats. You're going to hear more about that later when I am preaching, too. <laughs> A 
reading from Jeremiah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom, whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand to touch my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fourth chapter. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, do do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah when the he heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all the synagogue, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I was asking the kids about what they want to be when they grow up, I didn't get into all the stuff about how once they get into high school, they might end up meeting with guidance counselors and taking aptitude tests in, in high school and college that are supposed to tell them what they should be doing with their life based on their gifts and their interests and their passions and their energy. I remember taking those in high school and being told, the guidance counselor said, that all the things indicated that I should be either a doctor or a psychiatrist. None of which went along with my plan of being a cop or a lawyer. And I didn't want to do either of those because that was a whole lot more school than I wanted to do at that point in my life, too. No interest at all. I don't think I'd do well as a doctor. The detail thing again. But then I had to take another aptitude test when I was in seminary, because when we go through candidacy, I work with the candidates on this, too, and Joel can tell you because he did it recently. We had to do a psychological evaluation. And a part of that was one of those aptitude tests, too called the Strong Campbell Inventory that comes out and tells you this is what you, your interests and your gifts are steering you toward. My number one, broadcasting. <laughs> I thought, well, I guess I will be in, in the pulpit if I go that way. And I thought, well, maybe that means I'm going to be a TV preacher someday. 
or radio preacher. Little did I know it would be foreshadowing to 2020 when we all started doing worship online and by Zoom. And yeah, I was a broadcaster. I, I still am. Today we're being broadcast online as well. I don't think that was in my head 30 years ago at seminary, 30 plus years ago. Point of all that though is that things change. That aptitude test I took when I was in my late 20s was not at all the same as the one that I took in high school that said I should be a doctor or psychiatrist. Those didn't show up on it when I was 28 and taking it again. A broadcaster. Pastor was like in the second, you know, clergy was in the second level of that. But we joked about that with my classmates that I was going to be the one who would end up being the TV evangelist someday. That hasn't happened. But I asked all of you too, when it was that, or I didn't ask when, but I asked if you're doing now what you thought you wanted to be when you were children. And there's a lot of change for all of you from when you were kids, because we change as we grow. And it doesn't end when we become adults either. The great resignation is showing us that right now. People all over the country are resigning from their jobs. Some are just straight up retiring. I have a high school classmate who just retired this year. I'm so jealous of her. I have some seminary classmates that retired this year, and I thought, how did you manage that? And they said, well, we found out we could, so we did. I also know a lot of people who are resigning from a job because they've been unhappy in, a, for, in it for a while, but they're not retiring, they're finding something else to do with their life. It might be another job in another place doing the same thing, but there are a whole lot of people who are discovering that this is a good time to try something new that they've always wanted to do. Maybe it's the artist inside of them that's always been crying to get out. Maybe it's the master gardener that they've always wanted to be. But, but the thing is, whatever it is, it's something that they feel called to now because we've come to realize that sometimes things just change. But it's not just now. Statistics, I was looking this up this week, the statistics show that 80% of college students change their majors at least once. That's a lot. They start out college thinking they want to do one thing, but as they're taking their coursework for it and they're learning more things, they're realizing, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Eight out of ten. And I'm sure their parents are not thrilled. I thought about changing my majors in college, too, and my parents were like, just stick it out. You're in your third year. <clears throat> We're not going to pay for you to go seven years like your brother did. <laughs> and then he taught school for one year and then quit. So they weren't going to go through that with me. But I also looked up how many people, how, what the average number of times is that people change their careers once they're grown and done with schooling. Well, in the United States, of course, between 18 and 24, when people are trying to figure out what they want to do, there's an average of 5.7 career changes. That's quite a few. Six years of your life, there's an average of six changes in career, because you're figuring it out. But then as you get older, that changes. From 25 to 34, they change jobs on the average 2.4 times. And then it changed, shifts higher a little bit again from 35 to 44 because I think the midlife crisis is starting. And then they, they change occupations about three times. And individuals between 45 and 52, they change only about 1.9. That might have something to do with the fact that it's harder to get jobs sometimes as we get older. But that being said, at seminary, I had a lot of classmates who were in their 50s. One of my classmates was 72 when we graduated. 72 and starting a new life as a pastor. And she got a call. 
and she served for several years. All of this is to tell you that sometimes it's really hard to know what we are supposed to be. Sometimes it takes us a long time to figure out what God is calling us to. And sometimes that changes. But it doesn't always come clearly and quickly like it did with Jeremiah. But Jeremiah heard a very clear voice to him. I really wish sometimes God would speak to me like that. It would make things a lot easier, wouldn't it? If, if God would just say, this is what you need to do now. Well, it doesn't work that way. <clears throat> but it did for Jeremiah. Because God spoke to him and appointed him at this young age to be a prophet to the nations. If that's what it's going to mean if God speaks to me, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I really don't want to be a prophet to the nations. And he didn't either. He tried to get out of it. He protested that plan pretty loudly. I don't know how to speak. I'm only a boy. Wrong attitude, Jeremiah. That's the message you got from God. First of all, it wasn't his choice to make. His calling wasn't about him, it was about God. And we always want to make it about us, but we have to remember it's about God. And God corrected him by making several promises that put the focus back on God's actions, not his. He reminded Jeremiah, you can't do anything alone. Everything you are, everything you do, comes from God. If you look back at that, that reading again, and you listen to all the promises that God makes to Jeremiah, he says, you shall speak what I command you. Do not be afraid. I will deliver you. And God put his hand out and touched Jeremiah's mouth, putting words in his mouth, and said, I appoint you to do all these things. So it was obvious in all of that that his calling came from God and his gifts and his abilities would also come from God. But the second thing about Jeremiah's protests was that they were very limiting. I'm only a boy. I'm only doesn't serve anyone very well. All it does is limit who you are. And it limits what God is able to use you for. I'm only a girl. I couldn't do that with my life. I'm only an average student. I could not possibly accomplish that. I'm only an office worker. I wouldn't know how to lead a group. I'm only. I can't. I don't know how. All of those things are very self-defeating. And they all forget about the power of God to use us in amazing ways. <clears throat> our potential as humans, our potential as valuable contributors is unlimited and knows no end with God's help. As I look around, I see a lot of gray hair, and I, I'm saying that as somebody who has mine coming in too. But I know that one thing I've heard often is, I can't do that, I'm too old, I'm only a senior citizen. Well, I have a good story for you on that. In the Wall Street Journal, they wrote an article about a woman who was suing the city of New York because a police officer who was drunk while he was on duty had struck and killed her 71-year-old husband with his patrol car. The city figured that would be a nice, easy one to buy their way out of because he was 71. What kind of earning potential could he have at 71 anymore? It was pretty depleted, right? So they thought they were going to lowball her and make her a very low offer. But the woman hired an attorney named Harry Lipsig to handle her case. Mr. Lipsig had just recently left his old firm, which he had built, so that he could start up another one again on his own. And Mr. Lipsig was 88 years old. The city settled out of court for one and a quarter million dollars. I'm only a senior citizen. But you know what? There's no limit to what God can do with you. So I ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? 
because some of you are still growing up. We never stop. What do you see as your calling, your vocation? I'm not talking about just a job, but your job is your calling and your vocation. And you know what? The same can be said for your congregations. What do you want to be when you grow up? But even more so, what does God want you to be? Who is God calling you to be in this community, this city of Shreveport in the future? What's going to be needed to figure that out is some listening. Listening to God's word for you, but also listening to see where God is already at work around you and inviting you to join in. I know your two congregations already do some of that well. I had dinner last night with Pastor Joel and his family, and I heard some of the ministries that you were doing with Hope House and Hope Connections. There's a lot of hope here in, in Shreveport, which is good. How do you continue to work with that? And is there more that God is calling you to be in this community? Is God only here on Sunday morning in this place, and when you walk out the door, God is left behind? Or does God go with you? Even better questions, do you pay attention to God when you're outside of these doors and these walls? God's call to Jeremiah is not so different from his call to us. We are not alone in what we do, and what we do comes from God. When we recognize that we are not self-sufficient, God accompanies us in everything that we do and makes it better. Another true story about a, a great pianist named Paderewski at Carnegie Hall. In the audience one, one day was a mother and her young son. And at intermission, in the midst of this big crowd, the mother realized that her young son was no longer next to her, which created a little panic for her in that big crowd. And over the sounds of the crowd in that lobby, she heard a very distinct sound of chopsticks being played on the piano. And her heart sank because she knew where her son was. And she took off back into the, the concert hall and there, sure enough, she could see her son up, st up on the stage sitting at that magnificent Steinway concert grand. But before she could get there to get him off the stage, she heard some lovely music coming from that piano. Because the great pianist had quietly slipped in behind the boy and placed his talented hands beside the child's and added a beautiful accompaniment to that simple chopsticks tune, and it was gorgeous. You see, God takes everything we do and adds to it. God makes it full and complete, and even when we think what we do isn't enough, God makes it enough. Our simple music that we play with our lives becomes beautiful when God accompanies us. And by allowing God to lead us, we can realize our full potential, whether I'm talking to you as an individual or as a congregation or as two congregations. We are created and gifted by God. And we live as those who are called to witness. We can't separate what we do with our daily life from what we are doing as God's children. And it isn't always easy. We see that from that holy gospel where Jesus was rejected in his own hometown. But the point is, he walked out in the midst of that. And he was unharmed. And he continued to do God's work that he was sent here to do. Because God is here to accompany us. We are created in the image of God. Imago Dei. ID. Our identity comes from God. And it's tough to ignore that identity when it's really ingrained in us. So we remember that we are created by God, in God's image, with God accompanying us. So what is there that we can't do? 
question I need to ask you then is not what do you want to be, but who do you want to be? And who do you want to accompany you? Amen. And we will stand to sing our opening hymn, which I think is very appropriate because it's a reminder that God is with us even as we tell God's story. you to join with me and Christians around the world as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, as Son, who was God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled. 
to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. And in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may be in his life, to honor our Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us forgiveness and remission of all our sins. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord has poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, teach us to live in humility on the earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, you are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all who suffer in body or spirit. We pray especially for Sil, Caleb, Ruth, LD, Kathy, Jack, Don, Susan, Ellen, for the family. Carol Trotter. We pray for all those we name in our hearts. We pray for those known only to you. God of grace. Your grace falls upon us, young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace. God be with us as we celebrate with those who have an anniversary of their birth this week. Especially Chase Fielder, Jack Parker, and Miriam. God of grace. We pray for you, we praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never-ending love. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. collect the offerings for today. up front. You are definitely calling what you are doing what you are called to be.
us pray. Blessed are you, you O God, sovereign of the universe. You are the of the universe and guide us in the future. Lead us to your table, nourish us. to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. supper he took the cup he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me we pray as our Lord has taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come thy will be done Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's, God's table, there is room for everyone, and all are welcome.
you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Don't put that on me. <laughs>